Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. That's our prayer this morning, our Father. That we may know you, dear Lord, so that we can worship you, King of all the glory. But Father, we give you glory, we give you honor this morning for the gift of another new day, dear Jesus. We purpose to rejoice and be glad in this new day, dear Lord. This being the first Sunday of the month of September, dear Jesus, we are forever grateful. And this morning we surrender before the throne of mercy, dear Jesus, giving you praise to your Father for making us a remnant, this far King of all the glory. Help us to know to you, Father, the purpose where we are living, so that we can do it in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you for this service, Abba Father. We want to thank you for the gathering of your people this morning, Jehovah God. You know, you never gather your people in vain, everlasting Father. Therefore, we are here expectant, Jehovah Father, because you know you've laid a table before us this morning. We are here to dine with you, King of all the glory. Come and speak to us in a language you can understand. We thank you and bless you this morning. We worship you, Jehovah Father. Thank you for our nation, Kenya. We thank you for the beauty in this nation, dear Father. We thank you for the promises you have, Jehovah Father, for this nation, dear Lord. We are holding on to them in the name of Jesus Christ because you know that you promise is faithful to your master to bring it to completion in the name of Jesus. We thank you for our leadership. We thank you for the body of Christ, our Father and King of all the glory. It is you who is building a church, our Father. Help us to be the kind of mature that you want us to be, Jehovah, so that you can use that in building your, your church in the name of Jesus Christ. We surrender this morning. We are here, dear Father. Oh God, that, that came through those doors to your Father. They are no all. This is the hour of their healing to your Father. Them who came discouraged, Abba Father, you're going to encourage them in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that are bereaved, Abba Father, you're going to comfort them in the name of Jesus Christ because you are all rounded God in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you because you have a solution for every situation. And therefore, this morning, we surrender ourselves to you. That you come to your Father and take your place. Come and do to your Father that only you can do and will do. In the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you and we want to bless you. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may have our seats. Thank you, worship team. We thank God this morning for making us a remnant this far. And the remaining part, we are trusting him because he's able my name is Beatrice Waithaka. Let, not, let me not assume that everybody knows me. And I'm a member of this church and a daughter in the house. And I'm born again this morning. I want to bring the word of the Lord when I'm born again. And this morning, by the mercies of God, we want to look on a topic. True confession demands a right view of sin. True confession demands a right view of sin. We are going to read from the book of Psalms 51. Psalms 51, verses 1 to 3, just to begin with. And before we go on, let me salute my parents, Bishop. Thank you for giving me this purport. And Pastor Alice, we are all here because of you and the support of the brethren. This is a prayer that was made by a servant of the Lord by the name of David. And David said, have mercy on me. Not on us. He said, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgression. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin for I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. When I was Psalm 51, it is a prayer made by David just to have to make a recap of where we are coming from. Before David made this prayer, David had committed sin simply because he was in the wrong place at the wrong time, doing the wrong thing. 
people had gone to war, David was left in the palace. And when he was in, left in the palace, he decided to go and bask. And I believe maybe it was a time of cold like we are, we are living now. And David decided to go and bask in the, in, in the sun. But when he was basking, he looked across and saw a lady bathing or taking shower. And you know, just normally you said, macho haina pasia. But I believe macho kona pasia. Because David looked at that lady when she was bathing until she was over. And then what came into my mind that the way he can sleep with that lady, not knowing who she was, and David sent for that lady. That lady was brought to him because you, the powers that David had, nobody could have said no. So David was brought, to, this lady was brought to David and David slept with this lady. This happened to be somebody's wife and the husband had gone to war and David was the captain of this army but he was left behind. Friends, there are consequences when you are doing the wrong, when you are found in the wrong place, doing the wrong thing in the wrong time. So David was found by this sin because he was in the wrong place, the wrong time, and he did the wrong thing. So Psalms 51 is a well-known confession of David. The opening two verses contain full proverb, prayer, pro, pr prayer verbs. Number one, it was have mercy. And number two was blot out. Number three was wash. And number four was cleanse. All these four words means the same thing. And you know when you're in a problem, you look for every word that can, can help you to maneuver through that problem. So here comes the prophet of God, prophet Nathan, and told David, somebody, the, 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 somebody had a, a, a visitor. And this, this, this person, the one who was visited, decided to go and pick a sheep from a neighbor or from a poor man's flock and slaughtered that sheep for this visitor. And Nathan asked David, if you, it was you, what would you have done? David said, confidently, that man deserves death. And Nathan said, Prophet Nathan said, you were the man. And that is what you did. You went and took the only sheep that that poor man had. You took by the Sheba, somebody's wife. You slept with her. She conceived. And later on, you planned how the husband, Uriah, will be killed. So that is the man. You are the man. David knew his transgression or sins. But the people around David, nobody could point a finger because they judged David from the outside. And this morning, friends, when we look at you and you look at me, we all look okay. But there's a sin inside you. Whenever you go before the Lord, then it brings about that sin. And unless you confess it, you can never run away. David was where you are. But the Lord is saying this morning, repent. And I'm going to wash you. I'm going to cleanse you with high soul. And you shall be as white as snow. But you all look on the outside. And you, are, you look so okay. But the Lord is saying this morning, that sin. And you know it. Nobody knows about it apart from you. Because nobody knew what David was going through. Apart from David. Him and him alone. David's adulterous relationship with Bathsheba and his provision for Uriah's death. Remember this. The act that David did, Uriah bear the consequences because he killed Uriah for nothing. This man could have lived, but because of the powers David had, he killed, he planned for Uriah's death. And he told the captain, when you go to war, put Uriah on the first line so that the first spear, though some there were no bullets, the first spear would strike Uriah. And that is what happened. And then David was left with somebody's wife when the husband was dead. David does his relationship with Bathsheba and his provision for Uriah's death are the blackest of scars on that godly king's character. This man loved the Lord. All said and done, David loved the Lord as you and I. But remember one thing. David did. A sin that brought a scar in his life, though he was a God-fearing man. This psalm is David's prayer to God for forgiveness. Is in general enough time so that sinners that are living in the house this morning 
as well as sinning believers, may echo its opinion. You might be a sinner or a sinning believer. But the beauty is there is one who searches the heart. No looks on the outside, but he searches the heart. If you can repent, he's ready to forgive you and forgive me. David had problems. He was a man after God's own heart. David was a great worshiper and a great writer of Psalms. Most of the Psalms are written by David. He had known the blessings of God. He had declared the blessedness of God, but he had problems. He was a man and a sinful man. Even though he had been forgiven by God, but he particularly seems to have a problem with the women. What is your problem this morning? David's problem was women. What is your problem? Is it money? That nobody can put money? You can, you can take it even without asking whose it is, is. What is your problem this morning? Identify your problem. Identify your weakness. For the Lord is here this morning to set us free. The one who forgive David is the same. When David wanted a woman, he took her. No matter who she might have belonged to. And his story is a sad story when you look at it from the point of view of his many incidents with the women and his wives. And he taught his ways, his life, his ways to life lessons to his son very well. For Solomon far exceeded his father's fear. Solomon had a thousand wives. Can you imagine a thousand wives? Sin had made David feel dirty and wanted to be clean. Sin made him to feel guilty and made him sick. He wanted to be well. Sin made him to be disobedient and, had, had, and had, had made him lonely and he wanted to be reconciled to his maker. Sin had brought rebellion and made him fearful, and he wanted to be pardoned. True confession has three folds. Sin, you see, you see your sin for how and what it is. You see God for who he is. And finally, you see yourself for who you are. I come again. True confession has three folds. One, you see your sin for how and what it is. That's why I said we all have our weaknesses. Your weakness is not my weakness. Your sin is not my sin. When you kneel down to pray, the enemy knows there's a sin you have not confessed. There's something that you did in that wrong place, wrong time, wrong thing, and wrong place. And the enemy knows this one you have never repented. Repented. And the beauty is it's only you and God. Nobody else knows that sin. You see God for who he is. He's a forgiving father. Nobody comes to God and be rejected. And finally, you see yourself for who you are. Who are you after forgiveness? You are a son of the most, most high God. And from that verse, we, from that chapter, let's see six perspectives on his sin confession. And number one, we find this in verse number four. He knew that his sin deserves judgment. Friends, let's not justify sin. That sin deserves judgment. And David said, against you, you only, against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. David knew that what he did, he never he, he never covered his sins, but he knew that what he did, he deserves judgment. And he said, so you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. The Lord is going to judge you and you tell him you are right in your judgment because I deserved judgment. He's appealing for grace and more compassion because he cannot appeal for justice this is where we say, justice may not prevail, but we ask for your favor. He knew that justice, he cannot appeal for justice. He cannot appeal to law because the law says, when you kill, you're supposed to be killed. He cannot appeal to achievement. There was no achievement. 
And you, you later on, this child that Bathsheba conceived, later on passed on. So that's what the consequence is. That every choice in life, friends, every choice in life has a consequence. It may not appear now, but remember this. Whatever you did with the time, it will reserve this. Because every choice, good or bad, has a consequence. David knew. He, he understands what he deserves. What do you deserve this morning? With that sin that you did, what do you deserve? Number two, he can appeal only for mercy. David knew he can appeal only, not anything else, but for mercy. According to your loving kindness, this is David, be gracious to me. According to your loving kindness, not only kindness, but loving you love. And you are so kind to me. According to your loving kindness, be gracious to me. According to your compassion, I can only ask for mercy or grace. David knew there's nothing else he can ask from the Lord apart from mercy and grace. Undeserved favor. Undeserved consideration. Undeserved and unmerited without of, with, with, with withholding of judgment. He knew if God could judge him, Friends, David knew he cannot survive. But he knew one thing. If the Lord can have mercy upon him, look him with the eyes of favor, he's going to make it. Number three, cleanse me from my sin. Cleanse me from my sin. David did not say, cleanse me from my lust. No, he knew that first and foremost, if you repent your sins, the Lord is going to take care of the rest. He said, cleanse me from my sins. There's a lot of me's, me's, and my's. This is personal guilty. And David knew, it is me. It is my transgression. It is me who sinned. It is my iniquities. <laughs> David uses all the words for evil just to plead for the mercies of God. It was not a one-day thing or a one-touch. He knew he needs the mercies of God. Therefore, he said, it is me who have said. It is my transgression, not ours, but me. It is me who have sinned. He says, blot out my transgression. Wash me from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. And he uses the word transgression again. David used every word that can touch the heart of God because he needed mercy and then failing kindness of God. Number four, he accepts full responsibility. We read in verse number three, the Bible says, for I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Always, not a one day thing, but my sin is always before. And I said in the beginning, you know, when you go to pray, there's that sin that is always before you. David knew that what he did, first and foremost, the eyes, what he saw. Number two, he sent. Number three, he acted. And number four, he killed Uriah. So these sins were always before him. He was not immune to sin. There are so many sins that he had done, but this one touched the heart of God because it was an act. An act of adultery and an act of taking an innocent life. It is critical that here we find David does not blame anybody, but who? Himself. When you are caught, you say it is a company. When you are caught, you say it is my husband. When you are caught, you say it is my wife. When you are caught, you say it is my children. It is my neighbor. But David knew one thing. It is me and God. Therefore, he blamed nobody. He blamed himself. God is honored when you take the responsibility of your sin. You can blame God. For example, that is what happened to Adam. When the Lord asked Adam, what did you do? Why did you do that? Adam said, it is the woman you gave me. But David owned it. He said, I did it. I saw. I sent. I acted. And I killed. And out of that, 
God remembered mercy and forgave David. In the book of Proverbs 28, verse number 13, the Bible says, whoever conceals or covers their sins does not prosper. But the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Whoever conceals or whoever covers their sins does not prosper. But the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Friends, sins of omission, commission and omission, we are to repent. Don't cover any sin. Let's be, go before the Lord naked and tell the Lord, I did it. And you, for sure you know you did it. So the Lord is saying, whoever covers his sin shall not prosper. But whoever confesses and renounces, they find mercy. In the book of Luke 15, in verse 21, this is about the prodigal son. When he came back to his senses, he said, I am going back to my father. And this is what he said. The son said to the father, to him, Father, I have sinned. And I want you to see, he owned it. I have, nobody chased this young man from home. He went, and then when he came back to his senses, he came back home. He said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Just as David said, I did it and I've sinned. This young man said, I have sinned against heaven, this against God and against his earthly father. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Sin had separated this young man with his father. But the time he came back to his senses, he knew one thing, that my father is a forgiving father. He decided, I am going back home. Therefore, he came back home and asked the father, I'm not worthy to be called your son. But he's like our father. He's waiting for us to repent and come back to him. This son said, I did it. He owned his sins. Remember, he, went, he left home, packed. He came back empty. But the father said, the only thing he was looking for, it is his son. And the relationship between him and his son. True confession accepts total responsibility. True confession accepts full, accepts full liability for sin. And as long as your confession is, Lord, I know I did it. You forever be a friend of God. When you own your sin, when you don't cover your sin, when you confess it and only let the Lord, I did it, the Lord is forever gracious to forgive. Because you know, we are, we are in this flesh and the first enemy, it is our flesh. Therefore, don't cover your sins. Let's go before the Lord, before our Father who is full of compassion. Number five. There is the, the, the recognition that it produce, proceeds from your nature. Number five. There is the recognition that it proceeds from your nature. Verse number five says, Surely I was sinful at birth. Sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely I was sinful at birth. Friends, nobody is born a Christian. The only people that are born Muslims are Muslims. A Muslim gives birth to a Muslim. But for us, we, we, we give birth to pagans. And then in the process, they come to know Jesus, whom to know his life eternal. Therefore, David said, surely I was sinful at birth. Sinful from the time my mother conceived me. We are all sinners just by the grace of God. We believe the Bible teaches us that life begins at conception. And at, at, and at conception, the sin principle is operative. At conception, the sin principle is operative. And David admits this, that in sin, my mother conceived me. In sin, was I conceived. We are like David, all of us. In sin, we were conceived. The Bible says in Psalms 58 and verse number 3, Even from birth, the wicked go astray. From the womb, they are wayward. 
spreading lies. Even from birth, the wicked go astray. From the womb, the moment you are out of the womb, they are wayward and they start spreading lies. Therefore, before you start spreading the good news, you start by spreading lies. But in the process, you are converted and start spreading the good news. The wicked are no longer close to God from the time they are in the womb. And they go astray as soon as they are born. Friends, God is holy. It's upon you to detach yourself from the life that you are living. It is upon you to detach yourself from who you are from the womb, from conception and the time you are born. It's upon you to know that you've been called and set apart for a purpose. True confession recognizes that God does not care how many times you go to church. God does not care how many Christian books you own. God doesn't care about all the exterior. God is about the inside. How is your inside? Or how is my inside? That is what concerns God. That inner man. Not the outer man. People may judge you from the outside. But the Lord is judging you from the inside. True confession takes into account the fact that God he is absolutely holy God. Nothing else. There's no bargain about it. Our God is a holy God. And demands holiness in the life of an individual. Clean in the inside. You get to the real issue. Now what, now what you did. You get to the real issue. Not what you did, sorry. But the dirty of your heart that made you to do what you did. Because look at David. David was a king. It's not about what he did, but what was in his thought. He looked, and then what he saw came into his thought. And he decided to act. Most of us, there are things that we, we find ourselves in because we thought about it. We saw it first of all, we heard about it, then we thought about it, and then we acted. But David said, it is me, not us. It is me. Don't punish my, my family punishing me because it is me who did it. Therefore, friends, it is the, the, the dirty of your heart that made you to do what you did. Because when David conceived what he saw, next minute he, he went into action. Because you can see what is in the man's heart by what he does. People can judge you. What you are doing is what is in your heart. And somebody said this, that if somebody calls you a dog, don't be offended. There are so many dogs inside him. He has only released one. Don't get offended. And when the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And number six. We find this from verse number eight. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Friends, look at a shepherd and sheep. Do you know what shepherds used to do with wayward sheep? When a sheep was wayward, the, sheep, the shepherd could take that sheep and break the leg. Take the leg. He takes that sheep and breaks the leg and then put that sheep on his shoulders. He continues nursing that sheep until the time comes when he puts the, the, the sheep down. And this sheep, when he can stand on his own, or she can stand on his own, he becomes the best friend of the shepherd. Do you want us to be broken? The, to our feet to be broken? If we go that way, the Lord is going to break our, our, feet, our feet so that he puts us on his shoulders, walks with us, with the other sheep that are walking on their own until we are healed. When we are healed, he puts us down. And from that time, we can our bodies in Jesus. Is that what we want? 
Hapana sifie chachi. Muko. During the entire time, this shepherd could put this sheep upon his shoulders and they walked together. And goes, guess who followed the shepherd everywhere? The sheep that the feet was broken. And David says that my bones will rejoice with gladness because you had broken my feet. David says, Lord, I had my legs broken and you broke them. Nobody broke them. It is the Lord. I got the message. I'm ready to follow. That was what David is saying this morning. That I got the message. Now I'm ready to follow. The sin in David's life was a great push to his holiness. The sin in David's life was a great push to his holiness. It was a time of reformation for him. And David is saying, make me hear joy and gladness again. That the bones which you broke may rejoice. Because now they are healed. But remember this. For those who have broken their legs here, it can never be the same again. And David knew this. David says, I have repented, Lord. And now I want to be joyous again. God can change your life. If you commit it to him. Even as a Christian, you can change your sins. You have so many habits of sin. You can change them. I want us to bow down. Let's bow our heads. And I want you to search your life this morning. As we bow our heads. Our sins are ever before us. Our heart with the sorrow breaks. And maybe you have come to the end of the rope. And I want to submit to you this morning. Unless we repent this sin. That is forever before us. We can never be a friend of Jesus. Because he's a holy God. And he's saying this morning. Repent this sin. And you knew it. And I know my sin. Today we are living in consequences. Of the sin we committed. We made a wrong choice. We did a wrong thing. At the wrong time at the wrong place. But today we are living in the consequences. But the Lord is saying this morning, I broke your leg. I can put you on my shoulders and walk with you. When you are healed, I'm going to put you down and you'll be forever on my side. This morning, the Lord is deciding to, cleanse, to clean us with high soap. We will be clean and ready for his use. The Lord is looking for vessels to use. We have so many. We are so many. But the Lord is saying, that sin, depend that sin, that I can wash you and use you. Christians, most of the sins in our lives could be sins of immorality, in deed or in thought, can be seen of lying. You cannot give one sentence without putting a lying word in between. Exaggeration is another sin. Cheating is another sin. Stealing is a sin. Coveting is a sin. Lasting after the things of the world more than the things of the Lord is a sin. Failing to pray the Lord has an expectation because he says in Ezekiel 22, 30, that he's looking for a man who can stand in the gap that he may redeem this nation. Failing to read the word of God. The word of God has been just a byword. But the Lord wants us to read it and know it so that we can stand in times of distress. Failing to grow is a sin. God does not work with the children, but he works with the mature men, people that can understand his mind and go and proclaim his gospel. The Lord does not work with the seeds, but he works with the harvest and fruits. Selfishness is another sin. It is about I, me, and myself. You are so selfish. The Lord is saying this morning, I'm here. 
to forgive you. And the sin of pride that without me, nothing can take place. It's all about me. The Lord is saying this morning, confess your sins and I'm ready to forgive you. Could be many other things that take control of your life. This morning, you can see what is before your eyes and always before your eyes, that sin. Examine yourself this morning. Let the Holy Spirit reveal these areas as you bow together in silent prayer. Let the Holy Spirit reveal the areas that you need the Lord. The sins that have easily entangled you. And maybe you're here this morning. You've never known the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. This is the best time to make a decision so that he can cleanse you from every former sin, every sin that you did in the past. You see that just a drop of his blood will cleanse you and make you as white as snow. You are here this morning. As you search your heart, you backslided. As you search your heart, you are living in sin. As you shall search, search your heart, intimacy with God is a thing of the past. But the Lord is saying this morning, I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. The Lord is here, ready to cleanse you, ready to give you a new turn, ready to walk again with you. You live in the past. I used to do. I used to say. I used to act. But the Lord is saying, what about today? If I come today, we'll have a place in your heart. The Lord is knocking at the door of your heart. If you open, he will come in and dine with you. And because he's a holy God, everything that is not holy is going to put it aside and pick you because he loves you. And he wants to walk with you now and forevermore. Is there anybody in the house this morning who want to give your life to Jesus? You said it is enough. I've done it with my own flesh. I've gone to the climax of sin. And now I'm coming back home like the prodigal son. Is there anybody? If you are there, you can raise your hand. We will pray together with you. Ashers, if you can see anybody lifting up their hand, we can pray together. Our Father, we thank you because you are a merciful God. We are coming back to the house of worship. We want to worship you in truth and in spirit. Bring us back where we belonged. In the name of Jesus. We are repenting our sins this morning like David, your, your servant. Because we want to be more like you to your father. Not in a measure, but in your fullness. Dear Jesus, forgive us. Forgive us. Make us vessels that you can use. Yes, our father, you've broken our feet. Thank you, because this morning we can rejoice with gladness that when you put us down to your Jesus, we'll forever walk with you. This is our desire this morning. And because you are a merciful God to your Father, you never left us to be consumed, but you brought us this morning so that we can know your heartbeat. And your heartbeat, dear Father, is for becoming children of the Most High God. We thank you and bless you this morning. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.